Which runner showed up for your run today? It's a simple concept, but because we're human beings, we're living creatures and not robots, you can feel different from day to day, from run to run. Some days you feel great, some days you feel normal, some days you might feel bad. When I work with athletes and the coaches that I mentor, I talk a lot about this concept of figuring out how you, which runner showed up, how you feel on the day, and how that can really influence your training. And if you get this concept down, it can really make a difference in how your training goes, optimizing it from run to run, making your training cycle more successful. So let's dive in and take a look at this concept of which runner showed up today. We've all had the experience of feeling differently from run to run. So let's take a look at some of the factors that may affect which runner showed up for you. So what I'd like you to do is take a few seconds here and think about all of the factors that may play a role in how you feel on a given day. I've got my list that I'm gonna show in just a second, but think about things that you feel like might uh, affect how you feel from run to run. Let's see if any of these are on your list. Uh, sleep and rest. Are you feeling that you've got good rest and recovery? What about nutrition and hydration? That certainly can affect how you feel each run. What about your stress level? High stress or low stress? This can be work stress, family stress, training stress. Uh, previous training fatigue, obviously, if you did a really hard workout the day before, you go for a run the next day, you're probably not gonna feel as good. Musculoskeletal fatigue, obviously the muscles are the ones that absorb most of the stress in our training. They're the slowest to recover, typically, so sometimes your muscles can just be under-recovered. The nervous system uh, gets fatigued as well. Obviously, it's turning on, off, on, off, on, off as you run, and so that cycling on, off can sometimes raise the nervous system's excitability and it can't recover. Um, what about these things? Motivation. Some days you're not quite as motivated as other days. Or what about your mood? Sometimes you're just not in a great mood and that can certainly affect your run. Or you could be in a great mood and that can lift your run and how you feel as a runner. What about hormones? Uh, obviously for women they have to take into consideration the normal menstrual cycle or if they're going through menopause that's changing their hormones. For men, as we age, testosterone changes, so our ability to recover from run to run can be compromised, so that can affect how we feel on runs, particularly in our recovery cycle. What about the time of day? Somewhat related to hormonal uh, fluctuations, but let's say you're normally an evening runner and you've got to do a morning run. That could affect how you feel or vice versa. Temperature and humidity, when you go out and it's hot and humid, obviously you don't feel as good as when you have cool conditions. But then there's probably a whole bunch of others as well that can go into this conglomeration that makes you feel the way you feel uh, on the day. And I think it's important whether you can put your finger on why you feel uh, sort of good or not good or great, uh, really doesn't matter. It's more about what are you going to do with that information. So now I'd like to walk through my system of how I talk to runners when I'm asking them how are you feeling and then what decisions uh, you want to make in your training uh, because how you feel should guide uh, how you do your training plan. So let's walk through that now. Now let's start with the bad. These are those few runs where you just feel awful. You feel heavy, it's like gravity increased on your body, you feel slow, you're not motivated, you feel uncoordinated. It is just a terrible run. It has no positive physical or mental feeling that you want to go out for a run or when you start running you feel this way. My advice on these red days, these days where you just feel awful, is skip the run. Go take a nap or get some quiet time. Eat calorically dense uh, comfort food, something that you can get some calories in you and make you feel better. Uh, and focus 100% on recovery. So this would be your nutrition, your hydration, your rest, whatever it is. Lower your stress 
Uh, anything you can do to focus on hydrate or recovery is really important. And then mainly this last point, which is don't invest in it. Sometimes when you have these really, really bad days, and often you don't even know why you feel so bad, you just feel awful. Uh, it's easy to invest in that and feel like, oh man, I'm, I'm not a good runner. What's happening to me? These days, I just toss them out. They are an anomaly. They don't happen very often, and we sometimes don't even know why they happen. But don't invest in those. Just take it as, hey, that's one of those red days. You're probably going to have a few of those across your training cycle. Just toss it aside, focus on recovery, and move on. Next, let's focus on the type of run that happens more often than this I feel awful run and that's where you feel okay but you're a little tired or sluggish and you kind of just want the run to be done. This is common maybe after you've done a hard workout the day or two before or you've had high stress in your life or you've under recovered, you haven't eaten well or hydrated well or the temperature's gone way up, it's extremely different than normal. Uh, the pace doesn't come easily to you, your motivation's kind of low, you really do need to recover a little bit more. My advice on those days where you feel okay but just sort of tired and sluggish, this kind of normal tired and sluggish you would expect after uh, maybe a hard workout the day before, focus on doing just the minimum volume for the day. You know, there's a range of volume for each day. Focus on doing the minimum and do that at the slower end of the pace range. No reason to try to push the pace when you're not feeling good. Certainly don't attempt a key workout if you're feeling this way. You'd be setting yourself up for probably a negative experience. It'd be better to move that workout another day or two into the future so that you can be more prepared. Uh, and then again, kind of like the feel awful day, focus on recovery. It's just indicating typically your body's not quite recovered or you've had some life stress or some external component that's making you not feel quite as good as you wish. And so we need to respect that and maybe alter the training to go on the, the short, shorter end and slower end of the, the volume and the pace range and that usually works really well uh, to kind of accommodate when you feel this way for your run. Now let's talk about the next type. This is the yellow. This is, I feel fine, I don't feel great, but I don't feel bad, I kind of feel normal. This is the bulk of our runs probably feel this way. Your usual effort equals your usual pace. Your mind is good, uh, you feel recovered, you're ready to go for your run. My advice on those days is just do the planned run or workout that's on your calendar. You should expect to perform as you usually do. Nothing really to uh, adjust when you feel kind of normal. Now let's move to the next feeling, the next runner that shows up, and that's the one where you feel good. You feel a little bit better than you expected to feel. Your usual effort results in a faster pace. You're not even trying and you run a little bit faster than normal. You kind of have a light and fresh feeling. You're excited to go for the run. You're, you're happy, you're, you're looking forward to this run. My advice on those days is to do the plan run or workout, but you can probably expect to perform better in it. You can probably run toward the faster end of the pace range probably do the maximum volume uh, listed in the workout for that day. It's a great opportunity for you to kind of get a big training stimulus in because you're feeling good. Um, a good example would be let's say you had a workout of four to six times one mile with two minutes recovery in between. Well then you'd probably expect hey I'm feeling good today I'm gonna shoot for the six times one mile. I'm probably going to look at my pace range and expect to sort of run toward the faster end of that range because I feel good that day. It's a great way to take advantage of those days when you're feeling pretty good. Next, let's talk about the glory days. Let's talk about the day when you feel amazing. Kind of like the I feel awful day, Occasionally within your training plan, you will have days where you feel amazing. It does sometimes, most of the time, you can't figure out why. You just, on the day, you show up and you feel amazing. And of course, that's why, who is this runner and why can't I feel this way all the time? The pace is fast despite lower effort. You're even holding yourself back, but you're going even faster than you would expect. 
you feel light, bouncy, you just want to go faster. It's one of those days where everything seems to come together. Running feels super easy. You feel like those runners you see on TV where it's just coming so easily. You're so fast. You feel like a pro runner on that day. My advice on those days is switch to a key workout. Now you need to use common sense. So for example, let's say it's a Wednesday and you're recovered and you, you, you tomorrow, Thursday, you're, you have a key workout scheduled for that day, but you show up Wednesday, you start your run and you, you feel amazing, you feel like this. Go ahead and do that workout that was scheduled for Thursday. Jump in there, let's take advantage of that day where you feel amazing. Let's get out there and let's do that key workout. Uh, do the maximum volume and pace. You might even run faster in that workout uh, than your pace range because you feel amazing. Now naturally, if you're gonna do that, you're gonna switch to some sort of key workout and really take advantage of that day, uh, you'll need to plan to uh, the consequences for uh, doing that is you've got to add more recovery of course so think about that think about sliding or maybe changing some days after but I feel like if you feel amazing and it's it's not gonna compromise anything in the future I would go ahead and take advantage of that day I would do a key workout I certainly do that from time to time where uh, maybe I have a workout for the next day planned but I just feel like wow today's a good day I really should do that workout today. I go and do that workout. I take advantage of that day where I feel really, really good. And then I know the next day I'll take that as my recovery day and then usually I can just continue with my training plan. But you may have to make some modifications depending on how you're feeling. Now obviously this is a day when you feel amazing. This isn't just, I feel good, I feel pretty good. This is, I feel amazing. That's when you want to make those kinds of, of switches in your training plan. So I feel like overall, uh, this is a great way to coach yourself. It's a great way to on the fly adjust your training based on how you're feeling. Because when I'm working with an athlete uh, individually, one-on-one -on -one in person, I'm always asking, how are you feeling today? How are you feeling today? And that gives me this information of maybe I need to tweak or optimize the workout based on how the athlete is feeling. Uh, so my final point is you can use this strategy to optimize the training based on how you feel. I encourage you to do that. Obviously in the McMillan training system, you can slide workouts around very easily to take advantage when you need to add more recovery or those days where you feel amazing, you can switch things around so you can really get a greater and greater training stimulus. It also helps you accept what is, which is a big challenge for a lot of us because we want everything to be an equation, but we need to accept how we're feeling. Uh, and even though we may schedule, oh, I need to do this workout today, if you're not feeling good, you, you shouldn't do that workout that day. So it allows you to take advantage and use how you feel to benefit your training. Uh, and lastly, I find it results in fewer negative workouts. You never put yourself in a situation where you're probably going to fail in a workout. And by that I mean, if you don't feel good one day, there's no reason going into a really stressful workout. You'd be better off moving that workout to later, adding a little bit more recovery until you kind of feel normal, good, or in the last case, when you feel amazing, then shift that workout. Go ahead and do that workout now. Take advantage of that day. It's a concept I really like for runners. I hope this video helps you, it gives you some insight into how to really modify your training based on how you're feeling. Do this uh, across your training cycle and I know you'll have better workouts, work with your body instead of against it, and that will show up with big results on race day. As always, if you have questions, let me know. Otherwise, I'll talk to you again real soon.